guys and girls, welcome back to my channel. I do hope you're doing well. Apologies, we are makeup free today because we're back in a little bit of a heat wave. Not that I'm complaining, not that I'm complaining at all. So at the moment, iced coffee is life. When I can't be bothered to make my own Canon, don't play around at the beginning of the video, darling. Thank you. Um, when I can't be bothered to do my own, these are an essential stock up in the fridge at the moment. And it is a good time for it to be a heat wave because we're having another episode of the travel diaries so my lovelies you know this is just gonna be a chit chat trip down merry L merry lane well, it could be merry i am merry when i'm on holiday um it's a trip down memory lane and we're throwing it back now to 2018 my first city break um it would have been the first breakaway with b and yeah we're gonna we're gonna take it slowly down memory lane because as i say it's gonna be a little bit Hmm, a bit raw at the moment, so I might not might not be as enthusiastic. But we're going to get there because I would probably say it's up there with one of my best little holidays because I love exploring. All right? And the place you would have already seen in the title, but we went to Barcelona. My first time ever going to Spain, going to a city break. So I've got my uh, trusty old phone, which can we just appreciate my case at the moment? I'm going all out summer with me lemons. And yeah, we are going to go down memory lane have a recap, have some iced coffee, and just have a general sit-down video, all right? So, Shannon Lee, you're rabbiting on, girl. Well, let's just get into uh, Travel Diaries, shall we? So, if you're not a regular to the channel and you've never seen a Travel Diaries before or like a sit-down with Shannon video, we're very comfy in these videos, right, my lovelies? Normally, hair is up, but I thought might as well make a little bit of effort because we never have makeup on in these videos um these are our very natural sit down chitty chat videos probably going to change positions around because you know i get a bit fidgety don't know one minute we're here then we're there then i'm there then we're here it, it ends up being a bit of a carousel doesn't it um but the travel diaries was something that i started this year because i wanted to reflect on all of my travels so far because fingers crossed all touch touch wood everything goes well i should be having a holiday later on this year which not gonna lie i'm coming into now the six week countdown and i'm slightly starting to get nervous you know just the jitters because it is my first time abroad on my own i'm not going anywhere local i am going out to dominican republic so it's a long way away if anything happens touch wood nothing does i've got all my insurance for everything my main worry is not being able to lift my suitcase at the airport or something just going wrong but once i'm through security and all that your girl's good like i'll be in duty free i'll be in my lounge i'll have me food and drink your girl will be happy but anyway stop digressing this is another thing with these videos my lovelies i will just sit and waffle along completely so february 2018 that was when we went out now i didn't have as much involvement in this as i would do a normal holiday why shannon you ask um me and b at this point had only been dating not even two months or like we'd not even been together two months um we got together the december of 2017 and we flew out early february 2018 so yeah it was about two months just about ish but um we wanted to travel and we wanted to do a city break. I'm not being rude. I'm trying to find the photos to get to the right point on my phone, okay? Um, we knew we wanted a city break. Try to find some places and everything like that. And we came up with Barcelona. There we go. Um, I had never booked a city break. So I didn't really know. Like, I just went normally to Tui. And they was really expensive for city breaks. Um, B had been on a few city breaks with the boys, like previously they'd gone skiing and everything like that. So he knew a little bit more on city breaks as opposed to me. I left him not solely in charge, but majority. Like I think I chose the hotel, which was a lovely hotel. But in terms of the place, like not the place, the um, company we went with, I think we flew through EasyJet. And all of that, that was him and he found it. And it was a lot cheaper than Tui, I'm not going to lie. The only thing I found, but I don't know if you get it with city breaks, is, you know, like when you go abroad, for example, you come out, you go to whatever station, and you know that your transfer is there to pick you up. 
So we come out at the airport for Barcelona. I don't think it was Barcelona airport, like the nearest airport. And we didn't know where the transfer pickup was. And no one would help us. That is what I remember. My first like landing in Spain and no one helped us. Um, we went to one end. It wasn't there. We then went back into the main airport and tried to find someone from like a trip excursion and tried to show them the paperwork. And they was like, basically, it's down the whole other end of the airport. Oh, my God, I've never run so fast in my life. You know me, I don't like stress or panic, especially on holiday. And, yeah, we never run so fast. Once we was there, it was absolutely fine. And they dropped us off because in Barcelona, it was a lot of like crossroads. So there was like a lot of T junctions and everything like that. So you get dropped off at this point and they're like, right, so your hotel's down there or down there and this is where you meet to pick up. We stayed at a hotel. Now, if I remember correctly, it was called Hotel Illunion de Art. I think there's two in Barcelona. There's the normal Illunion, but our one I think was Illunion de Art or de Art Illunion. It was kind of like a more modern version, I'm going to say. Um, it was probably about 40 minutes from the airport the transfer we went through all barcelona and i didn't realize there's so many parts to barcelona that sounds so stupid because obviously there's so many parts to say like london or manchester or liverpool like other cities but there was a section of barcelona that looked like the shopping district not that we went there but if i ever go back to barcelona i will be going to the shopping district we was more up I would say traditional Barcelona. We was about a 10 minute walk from the pier and the marina. And then you had like the aquarium, the little, not side alleys, but kind of like the more rustic vibe of Barcelona. Um, the harbour was lovely, very expensive though. The marina was incredibly expensive. But we was in like a good little situation. We had a huge supermarket about 10 minutes away. We had little local restaurants in the T junctions of all the bits and bobs. So it was actually a really good location. Bearing in mind we went in February, it wasn't hot, but it wasn't freezing either. It was quite a nice temperature. I think I remember we still took like a little thin, um, you know, like a bomber style jacket, the padded baseball-y kind of ones. We took one of them, the marina, if I remember correctly as well, they had like these big rocks that you could jump out to. Your girl didn't jump out to no rocks, let me just tell you that. Um, B, on the other hand, did several videos of him jumping and just hear me shouting in the background through, like, pure... Ah! But overall, it weren't too bad. We went on a Friday, and we stayed Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three nights and four days. We come home Monday afternoon. Um, I also remember we had a bakery... I was literally round the corner from our hotel because on the day that we left, we went there and I've got pictures. I had the best breakfast ever. So, so nice. So, 2018, what was Shannon Lee like with her hair? Shannon Lee was all over brunette. Kind of like when I started this channel. But look, oh, see, this is what I miss, right? 5.35 a.m., your girl was at the airport with her little case, Miss Scarf, Miss Starbucks, good to go. That is what I'm missing. So, as I say, we drove through main town Barcelona. And this is kind of what all of the buildings were like in our part. Very, it kind of gave me Italian vibes. Canon, there we go. I've never been to Italy either. But you see, it's just kind of like very rustic and kind of like cathedral vibes it was giving me. Sorry, it will go light dark because I'm showing you bits on my phone. I haven't yet mastered how to screen record on my MacBook yet. Because obviously if I did, I could just insert it there. But yeah, your girl hasn't got that far. When you walked into our room, we had quite a large setup. And the main thing, of course, it had a bath because we all know I have to have a bath when I go abroad I don't know what it is it is better to have a shower I am partial to some showers but I do still like to have a nice bath um and the theme was red which I absolutely loved I should have had me red hair when we went there so this was our bathroom which to be honest it wasn't a terrible size you had your sink and like dressing area you had a shower and bath combined and then the toilet was just behind the door so bearing in mind this wasn't I think back then it was a lot cheaper than Tui. I think we got three nights and four days, flights, transfers, hotels, and I think it was about 350 to 400 pounds, which I didn't think was too bad. Um, comparing Tui, you're 
pretty much paying double because it's with Tui. So that was a good thing that it was actually quite reasonable. I have started looking for city breaks next year, but I still like gravitate towards Tui. Um, I'm going to have to get out of a mindset. So if any of you do go on city breaks, my lovelies, can you please tell me of like any other companies that are good like not somewhere where i'm going to go and it's going to be an absolute nightmare or i'm going to get lost just somewhere that is a good like a lot of people say booking.com and that but if you've got any recommendations please do let me know and then when you walked in we had a huge like tv area so this was on the back wall which was absolutely fabulous the only thing we didn't have any channels on english it was all spanish um so yeah that was a little bit of a Oh, and then this was, so you had the TV along that side of the wall. And when you turned around, this was our bed. So a very, very spacious room. Like when you think for the price that you pay, so say say it was £400, right? So for four days, £100 for your flights could be £100 a night in that. That's a good space, 50 quid or whatever. So yes, we had that. Absolutely loved it. And first point of call, right, was food. Oh, look, there I am. Oh, my God. Though you had a full face of makeup and lashes for going travelling. Clearly, you can tell we were still in the honeymoon period. Oh, sorry if you hear the noise. We've got the cast of Footloose to go us again. Um, yeah, I think the flight was only, I'm going to say under three hours. So that could potentially be why I wore makeup. But, yeah, look, this was also, I think, brunette. Was it extension stage? Or was I just... No, it was extension stage. So a bit like my hair is now, but we had the extensions in. We shall see as we go through. So, I, does anyone else, right? No matter where we go, if I go to a log cabin, if I just go to a hotel room, I always have to take a picture of the door. We was room 718, and we was right at the end of the walkway. So you had all the other rooms, we was right at the end, and we had like a nice little view. There was an upstairs balcony, everything like that. Like, I mean, a bit too chilly to go on a balcony, to say the least. But the first point of call was food. We arrived there, I think, about one-ish. So our first thing, get in, unpack, and we went down and asked where the local supermarket was. They told us we went there, and then it was kind of down like a main strip. And there was a few little clothing shops. And then it was kind of like an indoor precinct. And we found this noodle bar. Now, even to this day, these are some of the best noodles that I have had. I don't think, what was it called? Primavera Sound Barcelona. And I mean, oh, good noodles. This is what I miss, okay? I miss food abroad. Canon, there Canon, Canon, focus on the noodles. Excuse me, focus on the noodles. These are good noodles. There we go. And I tell you now, right, that was a regular portion. And I think when we converted, like, because it was euros out there, I think that was like a fiver. Safe to say we did return again. And the thing that I noticed with Barcelona, also let me know if you've been to Barcelona, my lovelies. Um, it was very kind of like... I don't know, I think it was the area that we stayed in, but it was very rustic and traditional, which I liked. The shopping bit that we drove through kind of gave me like cans vibes, something very upmarket and everything like that. But we had like a really nice rustic view. So this was our view from the balcony window. So as you say, we was quite quite near the pier and you just looked over, we was like, there was a church there and there was kind of like a little monastery, I think it was. But yeah, it's very, very nice. So, when it came to the first night out, I know we had the noodles at like one or two o'clock, but there were so many little restaurants around us. We did have a little walk for a bit. The only thing, I'm not too sure how I feel walking in cities. I did feel a lot more on edge walking around in Barcelona than I would say, for example, like if I was on holiday normally. I don't know if it's because... Like, you know you're a tourist, as silly as that sounds, because you're a tourist no matter where you go. But you hear a lot of things in city centres abroad, like people saying, like, Paris, you have to be careful, and Venice, and, like, there's pickpockets. So I was a little bit more on edge, but it was absolutely fine. Like, we didn't have any problems. And after the initial trying to find the transfer and the people being quite unhelpful, the rest of the people was absolutely lovely. So... 
Oh, wow, you go. I actually done eyeshadow. Okay, so this is thrown about different, Shannon. I <laughs> I still have this dress. Um, I matched eyeshadow to my dress. Now, you know me, I don't wear eyeshadow. But uh, look at your girl back in the day. Look at that. See, I did make effort. I mean, look at that to that. What are we going to say? We've uh, matured and embraced the natural look at the moment. We went to a little restaurant. I don't think it says the name. Oh, it does. What was it? La Roca. Now, we walked past this place and, oh, my God, the smell inside. We had to walk up and there was a lovely Italian. And I was just like, you can't come to Spain and have Italian food. So we walked around, couldn't find anywhere else. So we went back to the very first place we saw. Now they had, it was like a meat extravaganza. And I remember it was 30 euros for two of us. So that was 15 euros each. Absolute bargain. You think, hey ho, it's just a bit of food, not a problem. No. My lovelies, right? We had a bottle of wine to start with. I don't drink wine. If I do, it's rosé, very, very rare. This was a rosé, very dry. I do remember that. I remember um, me and B, we weren't really wine drinkers. And we was kind of like, oh, this is like adult stuff. There weren't many of us in there. And it was very low lit. It was more like candle lights and a few little strobe flicker lights. But it was very like, very nice ambiance in there. And the other people in there were like a lot older than us. Bearing in mind, like we was 23 and 24 at that stage. So very very young and didn't really know much about wine to be honest so when they said oh da 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 we was just like yeah you know when you just like when people talk about wine and they're like oh it's this year and it's from this vineyard i'm just like is it sweet or dry because i don't do dry wines and then the food came out and wow so we had a huge and i mean this is a huge plate we had potato bravas which is they like diced potatoes and we had the two big pots of sauce on the side which was the garlic aioli which oh my god you know me i love my garlic all right and the i was gonna say french it weren't french shannon the spanish garlic aioli oh my god the potato brava sauce though a little bit hot a little bit hot um it was a lot hotter than what i remembered from the tasca in england and i mean it's it's authentic food ain't it it's gonna be like that but yeah and then we had the meat platter so we had half a chicken we had lamb ribs if i remember correctly sausages pork steak and then we had a huge beef steak that was part of the meat platter and you can see the potato brava sauces just up there oh my god that was probably one of the best meals I've had. The flavour in the meat. That's one thing that I always say. British people, we have great dishes, right? Fish and chips, all the classic. I've got a blooming fly in here. How annoying. But sometimes I feel we lack seasoning. You will notice if you go to a restaurant, and Mama G, she is the prime culprit for this, the plate will get put down. She will not even taste it before she puts salt on it. Dada is the same, but he puts pepper on it. I'm like, no, you have to taste your food. And then put your seasoning on. But I always find abroad, I never have to put seasoning on. Even when me and mum went to the Greek restaurant in London for her birthday a few weeks ago. Oh my God, the flavourings in that meat. Even in the tzatziki dip. It's not like your Tesco shop bought one. It's just... I don't know why. I do feel that we lack seasoning in our dishes, and I don't know why. We need to get better at that, don't we? I mean, our only seasoning really is like salt and pepper, ain't it? Ay, ay, ay. And then, so we had the next day full exploring. So Saturday and Sunday was like our proper exploring days because Monday, I think we was at the airport for about one, two o'clock. We got picked up at about 12-ish, I think. So the second day, we went down to the beach harbour. And as I say, we was about a 5-10 minute walk from this. You literally came from our hotel and walked down all of these steps past like a Spanish school and a football court, if I remember correctly. And as you went down, you was greeted with 
the harbour. So this wasn't the marina part, this was just the harbour part where you had little steps, people was there fishing, you had the rocks that you'll see in a moment and then the marina bit was when you walked along a little bit by a casino, there was a big statue of like a wrought iron fish. Very, I've never been, mm, is it though? Like I've never been to Cannes or Marbella or anything like that but it did give me the marina side like very bougie vibes is that the right word um but yeah our little section was very nice i need to go through my camera roll you know when the, there's sometimes i haven't gone through or deleted any pictures yet you're probably thinking shannon lee why not but they're just on there they're memories and now when you go through them it's kind of like oh hits the nerve so um this is the smaller part of the harbour uh let's have a look so these are all the little diddy boats nothing to like what the big boats are this was just the little bit of the harbour where they kind of had the little souvenir shops and like the little ice cream shops you knew as you was getting into the main part of the port and the harbour because the, it was like proper restaurants it weren't like cafes and little shops it was proper restaurants and yeah there's a whole story on the harbour for the last night because daylight robbery has anyone read in the paper well i didn't read it in a paper i saw it online on the daily mail in mykonos i think there's a place and people are going there and maybe saying having like a drink each and some oysters and they're getting like charged four five hundred euros if you've read that article let me know down below that is daylight robbery and i'm sorry that is gonna turn tourists against going to those places because the locals were getting it at the normal rate and they was just charging whatever they wanted for the tourists. Almost they was charging like how gullible they looked was what they were charging because the people was never being given a menu or being asked. Like I think someone had, what was it? Calamari and two cocktails. And they said it was like $400. And when they asked for the bill, they said like a cocktail was $150. Not dollars, um, euros. And I just think, why? That is absolute daylight robbery. I know in those places, because it is so popular, I think, because, like, celebrities and that have been there, they have put the prices up. But, I mean, that is just... That has kind of put me off. I would love to go to, like, Mykonos and Santorini and everything like that. But that... You imagine if I walked in on my own, they thought, hey, we're going to charge her, like, 500 <laughs> No. I would be like, when I sit down, could I see the menu, please, with prices? And then when you order your food, I'd be like, there is my payment. Don't be coming at me with like a 500 euro bill, honestly. And, ah, so these were like some of the little boats that we saw. Well, they're not little. You can see how busy the harbour is around it. And this is, I love this little boat. Some of them were ginormous, like they was blooming huge. And you just think, who on earth has that? And even then, they're probably minuscule to some of like the billions and millions airs that are in the world and ow hit my knee there that was a little bit uncalled for but yeah the harbour was actually a really nice place and then as you walked along oh this is what i mean about the big fish statue there's a big fish statue this was as you was coming up to the casino very bougie we didn't go in the casino don't think her mama g would have approved I mean, even if I did, she wouldn't have known, would she? she so once you got past the casino bit, that was where it was a lot more commercialised. Um, you had bakeries and crepe places. I've got quite a lot of pictures of crepes and food. It was where you was getting to like the aquarium bit, the signs for the zoos, the more souvenir shops that were a little bit bougie. That was kind of like traditional Spanish souvenirs. Um, you could buy clothing and everything there. Very, very lovely, but... I didn't want to spend too much. I think we took 200 euros each because we thought like a nice meal on the last night. If we did want any souvenirs, that would be more than enough. And I think we come back with quite a bit as well. It was made a change for me to come back with uh, spending money, that's for sure. So we had, well, I didn't. B had some, what are they? I think these are bubble waffles with cream. He just went very basic he just wanted nice waffles and i went now what was this was this i'm gonna say strawberries and cream and i think this was like was it a flake or a hazelnut 
I went for a little like ice cream sorbet. Can't be at a beach and not have a bit of ice cream, eh? So yes, very, very nice. And oh my God, there was buskers. Buskers in bands on the seafront. Oh, I mean, look, and they was loving life, right? They was having so much fun. Cannon. There we go. There was a whole group of them and they was actually really, really good, you know. This was on the way to the aquarium. So I am not good with directions. Okay, I'm all right in my car. If I know where I'm going, I'm absolutely fine. If I don't know where I'm going, Google Maps is a lifesaver. Abroad, we had Google Maps. But <laughs> you're basically saying you can't read a map, Sham, which is perfectly correct. Um... It was very easy to miss turnings in Barcelona because they're all like little roads off. And uh, I think we walked about 20 minutes in the wrong direction. To what point I gave B the phone and he become the person for directions. And on the way to the aquarium, you went to kind of like a big square. And now this part reminded me of London. It was just a big square and the traffic drove around the outside. And in the middle was all like little stalls. But it wasn't stalls as in such of like food or bits and bobs. I remember there was one and they had like a giant throw. Like bigger than the ones you get in TK Maxx at Christmas time, all right? A huge throw on the floor and it was all like, um, what was it? Magnets, key rings bottles bottles with like sand in and like Barcelona and that but I don't have a feeling that this market was legal because as we like wandered on through and got round to where the aquarium was all of a sudden you heard all of this commotion and everyone just kind of like grabbed these throws chucked them over their shoulder and legged it so I don't think that was a legal market so thankfully none of us got any money or our purses and wallets out there but yeah that scarpered pretty quickly let me tell you that Getting to the aquarium was quite uphill. And with the aquarium, if I remember correctly, I think it was more in the port of Barcelona where the big, big yachts come in, where the cruises come in and everything like that. So that was cool. We did see a good few boats there. And as we went in, I mean, you know, I'm just... Animals, especially fish, right? Take me to a zoo, I'm happy. Take me to an aquarium... And I'm like, I'm an absolute child. I think it's like all the colours and the calmness. Because obviously sometimes being in a zoo, it's very noisy. But when you're in an aquarium, all you hear is like the water tanks and the bubbling. It's very, very calming. And I mean, we just saw everything. I mean, this is probably one of my favourite. We saw, I know it's not Dory. But can you see that? We saw a little blue and yellow fish. There was an orange fish like Nemo. And it was just honestly beautiful. Like, the size of their tanks. People are probably thinking, Shan, London's a bigger. Isn't it weird, right, though? I love aquariums. I don't think I've ever been to a sea life aquarium. I don't think I've ever been to a sea life aquarium in England. I've done a few zoos. We've done Colchester Zoo countless times when I was a child. I'd done Whipsnade Zoo on a school trip. And I've done London Zoo once. I would actually like to do some more zoos. I think I've probably missed the time to do zoos now, ain't I? That's more like a summer thing. Even though we are still in summer, we've only got a few weeks left. But aquariums, you can go all year round. I might try and look for some aquariums. Because I, I do love a good aquarium, you know. And oh my god, we saw the hugest octopus. Look at that. Because B made a comment like, you're probably going to eat his brother tonight. I was like, oh, don't say that. And then this is what I mean, my lovely. So the big boys come in. So this was on the aquarium in Barcelona. You have like a viewing deck. So after you've been downstairs and everything, you come up. There's a section where you could write on a wall in chalk. I don't know if that's still there. We are talking about like four years ago. Wow, four years ago. How fast time goes, eh? Um, and you had like a viewing point where you looked out. And this was more where the yachts and the cruises popped in. So you can see like the big boy cruise was over there and the little yachts were in there. So it was a very, very nice ambiance. And actually looking at the photos, it was very sunny when we was out there. It was actually very nice. And then we detoured. We detoured to the zoo. 
and we got lost walking to the zoo and when we got there the zoo was closed um i think there was something on a saturday they had like half day because you know they have like siesta and everything out there i think saturday was a half day because it was kind of like warm for them and with the animals and that so we had to go back to the zoo the next day however we had a lovely little walk around a park there and i don't know what it is i just love all these like old statues i don't know what it is like don't ask me who this person is why i took a photo of it but yeah i just really enjoyed it so we did get there and surprise shan hadn't realized it closed so what did we do we got food okay um we went into a little local pizzeria and looking at the pizzas b had i i'm looking i don't know what meat that is maybe like beef or pork with peppers and cheese and i had a looks like baby meatballs some ham and onion and i think again these were like six or seven euros each which i mean look at the size of them my lovelies that's probably like five or six quid in england freshly made i remember the garlic bread i didn't take a picture of the garlic bread but oh my god the garlic bread was insane i would love to go to italy and try and compare to beat that garlic bread that is what i take away i remember the garlic bread so again we've done a lot of walking um we was averaging i think about 15 to twenty thousand steps a day so it was very very intense weekend and poor old tootsies they was hurting to say the least so we'd kind of because we were only there for three nights, we wanted to have some nice food. So as I say, we had the traditional one, which was around the corner of the hotel. And then on the second night, we was like, you know what? We will try and find a traditional Spanish place to have paella. Now, on the second night, it weren't a heat stroke because it wasn't hot. But I remember B didn't feel well. And we'd booked this table because you had to book out there. It was quite busy. And it was for, I did take a picture of the little napkin, La Fonda del Port Olympic. And it was like the traditional place on the harbour where you had the paella. And I was like, do you want to go? Because if you're not going to enjoy it, there's no point. And it was like, no, nope, we're going to go. So we'd had the pizzas probably about, I'm going to say one, two o'clock again. We walked down to the harbour because I say it was only about a five, ten minute walk. And then to go down right where the things was was probably about another 15, 20 minutes. So a nice little half hour walk, which at the evening is nice. It was a nice cool breeze. Um, That was another thing on the beaches over there. Just like groups of people playing volleyball and everything. Like not what you see here in the beaches. So that was really, really nice. We got there. He didn't really eat much. And I remember that. But your girl polished off the paella, okay? You cannot go to Spain and not have a paella. So, the first thing we started off with, probably not the greatest because he didn't feel well, but we had some camembert bites. Camembert bites and bread. Name me a better combo. Okay, camembert bites and bread. And then the piece de resistance. This was a chicken prawn and roasted veg one. And let me tell you, it was blooming delicious, all right? Again, the flavours. Oh, my God, you couldn't even fault it. We didn't have dessert, though. Because he didn't feel well, I was like, I'm not going to get him out uh, and be like, we're having a three-course meal. We just had the paella and the star. And the service is so quick there, especially with the paellas, because probably, I don't know, it's probably like in England, fish and chips. They know that people are going to go there for the paella. So it's just quick, quick, off we go. Oh, I've done another eyeshadow moment. Okay. Oh. Now we've got some uh, singing to go along with the cast of Footloose. I had a dark eyeshadow on tonight with a blue dress, maybe to match it. Would you look at that? Look at old Shannon Lee back in 2018, eh? Blast from the past. So, Sunday was a lovely day. Really nice day, actually, looking at the photos on this the weather was delightful and this is what i mean when i say there were big random rocks that you could jump on a lot of people was jumping on them um i've got a lot of photos and videos of b jumping on them to which i was absolutely petrified 
there was one where it weren't too far and he was like just jump and I was like no because I know I would have dropped my bag I would have dropped my phone my glasses probably would have miraculously flew off my head something would have happened so I was just like no um I'm just gonna stay here and take photos and have photographic evidence in case anything happens to you um yeah that wasn't that was not a bit of me at all but the sea was lovely out there and also there was a strip down so this part kind of not that I've ever been to America, but it kind of gave me like Miami vibes. They had these really large palm trees just scattered around along by the main strip of the harbour. So as I say, oh yeah, I've got a police convoy. Why did I take a photo of that? Who knows? So Sunday came around, we went walking again and we went back to the zoo. We did get in this time, thank goodness. And zoos abroad are so different to British zoos I found. Um, the animals just seemed so free. I mean, they were still in enclosures, but they're not like British enclosures. Um, they had so much room. And the only thing, though, some of the enclosures, you know, in England, they're like the thick tempered glass. This was literally just like the raw iron, you know, like what you would have at school, like a crisscross fence. At any point, an animal could have got out of that. Um, what did we have here? Oh, I don't know what animal that is. You know, we just take pictures and I think I don't actually know what that is. However, oh, is that one? So you see this, it's like the raw iron. That was a cheetah or jaguar. I don't know if it's going to focus. It's literally just in there. And yeah, it was a little bit worrying because you think, oh, oh, this I loved. All the flamingos. Now, my lovelies, there was not one bit of enclosure on these flamingos. So at any point, they could have just like jumped across that water and flew at us. Very, very worrying. Um, I did have a very bad experience on the way out, which I'll get to. But again, first things first, food. The food was delicious. Best zoo food ever. I remember going culture to zoo and I'd be like, oh, I hated the food there. This, again, I think this was a little bit more pricey because it's in like a zoo. I think this came to about 15 euros, which still isn't too bad. We had a plate of fries to share. I had a lemon tea, as always. B got an espresso. And then we got these two hot dogs. Oh, my God. Guys, just look at the size of these hot dogs, okay? Look at that. They were smothered in crispy onions, cheese. I had mustard on mine. Wow. Absolutely loved it. It was very busy though. And it's kind of like when you finish your food there, well, what we found, it was like as soon as you finish, you need to get up and go because they want that table. Whereas, you know, like in England or whatever, we just kind of dilly-dally, don't we? We'll finish our food, we'll sit there and have a gossip and have a bit of a chin wag, and before you know it, you've sat there another half hour. This was like, you was finished, they would come and clear your things and be like, thank you, a subtle way of saying, skedaddle, mate, all right? And probably my most favourite section, but I didn't like this bit, because this was where you kind of see... I know all animals in zoos are trapped, but you know, like, you don't want them if they was just literally being inquisitive to get hurt. So there was an elephant enclosure, but around it was, I think, I'm going to assume electric fences. And that just, it makes me sad because they might generally just say, be like reaching out their trunks for something and could get shocked. So I don't really like that. Look at the elephant. I was going to say, look at the little elephant. There's nothing little about that. And then, oh, what am I doing here? I'm having a photo shoot. Right, this is where um, B kind of realised that, okay, this girl likes to take photos and videos. I didn't actually take a proper camera on this, so it was literally everything on my phone. Oh, my God, and the best animal of all. Meerkat! Love a good meerkat. I do love a good meerkat. And then, oh, again, photo shoot, photo shoot. He must have got sick of photos of me. He must have thought, what on earth have I got myself into? What did you get yourself into, eh? And then the last night, we had a walk again into the harbour and wanted to go to an Indian. We really fancied a curry. Like, we missed home food. 
so we wanted an engine and this was our little walk so you went down to the main little bit of the harbour and you walked along this long strip to get to the main bit it was all well lit and you can see all of the lights and they had all of these um concrete like seats which ended up being my walking apparatus let's say on the way back because at this point again i was having really bad troubles with my toe and I knew I had to have surgery when I come home. So I couldn't wear shoes for long periods of time. So it was literally a case of we had the food. And as soon as we was out of the harbour, before anyone could see us, one shoe was off and I was limping along. And if I remember correctly, looking at this, it is my gym trainers. So my older, yeah, they are. My old tubulars, they've done me well. They've done me well. However, I remember this because it's daylight robbery. I'm just going to show you the food we had, all right? And then we're going to play a guessing game of how much you think it was. So we had general starters like we have here in England. We had some poppadoms. Four poppadoms to be precise, all right? That was our little entree. We then had a starter to share. We didn't have separate starters. We had a starter to share. And it was their version of samosas, but they was kind of like a quesadilla. It was just a mincemeat filled quesadilla. So you adding this up as we're going along, all right? We've had two poppadoms each. We've had half a star each. We then had, I had a biryani, which I mean was like a tiny bowl, okay? And B had a naan bread and curry. Nothing fancy. We didn't have loads of extra sides and anything like that. That curry, bearing in mind on the first night we had the bottle of wine, all of the meats and potatoes for 30 euros. The following night we had, I think B had a beer and I might have had a cocktail or something, the camembert and the paella and that was 50 euros, which we didn't think was too bad because you're going to pay a bit more for paella out there. For two poppadoms each, half a starter each, a naan bread to share and a main meal was almost a hundred euros. <laughs> ouch. Yes, ouch. When the bill came, it was one of those moments, <laughs> you know, when you're just like, oh. You don't want to say anything, but you feel like, oh my God, I've been robbed. Because if I remember correctly, I don't think there was prices on the menu. So again, it reminds me of that place in Mykonos where you don't actually know what you're getting. We could have been stung with a 500 euro bill. You never know. I mean, we would have been screwed if we did because neither of us had the money on us. But um, yeah, it was like almost 100 euros. And then you had like, um, they put a tip involved. So I think it was like maybe 90 and then 10 pound tip. And you, I remember people's like, why are we tipping? They've literally just bought us food twice because the starters they bought with the samosas and the main meals they bought together. So they'd only served us twice and we paid like a 10 pound. But I know that's like standard, but yeah. If you go to Barcelona and you go to the harbour bit where the casino and everything is there, just be very mindful that not necessarily the main restaurants. It's kind of on the harbour. You had the main front which was where the paella and everything like that was. And then you had like a little row behind, kind of not like a back alley, but similar. It wasn't the main strip. That was where we had the Indian. And that is, I think, where, I'm not going to say you get duck shafted, but that might be where <laughs> a little bit more expensive than you really think, all right? And then, as I say here, so this is me, look, limping. I haven't got my shoe on because my foot was bleeding. And I'm just casually walking along there, loving my life. With my gym trainer in my hand. And that was our last night. That was our last night. So the next morning we woke up. Breakfast time. As I say, we had a little uh, bakery around the corner to us. I had donuts. That was all I had. Oh no, what did I have? Oh no, we had donuts to share and we had a hot dog each. But looking at this... I think B had already eaten his hot dog. So that is why I look like the Gannet. But I think he had a big pan of chocolat as well at the back. And again, this breakfast I think was like 10 euros for all of this. So that is my like breakfast dog, hot dog. He did have one, but he's eaten it, I think. 
He had a big pan of chocolate and then we had some little donuts in the middle to share. He had, I think it was like an espresso and I had a latte. Very, very nice. And it was just bye bye Barcelona. Bye bye Barcelona. On the day we left though, look at how miserable the weather got. This was just as we got in our transfer. Can you see how gloomy and rainy it is? So we did pick a good day to go, I'm not going to lie. And um, Oh, I forgot about these pictures. Oh, oh. Cast a foot loose there. But yeah. And then before you knew it, we came back. And we came back to the airport. We flew from Gatwick. And when we got back, I remember B's parents picked us up and they was in his car. And we was like, oh. And while we'd actually been away, his dad's car had been stolen. I remember that. Our first little trip away and we come back and his dad's car had been stolen. And B was more annoyed because he was like, why didn't they want my car? Can you imagine if we, both the cars had been stolen? I mean, it went a little bit peaked on because quite a few later B's car did actually get stolen. Um, <laughs> so almost like his wish came true. I don't know if you could say it like that. But yeah, we came back and his dad's car had got stolen, unfortunately. So that was a bit of a bummer to the end of the holiday. But yeah, that was my first city break, my first time in Spain, my first time not going through like Tui or Thomas Cook or First Choice. And to say it was an experience is probably an understatement. I absolutely loved it and I would like to go back there probably just to try more food. I'm not going to lie. Um, Maybe go to like the shopping district bit. But it was a really nice time. And as I say, now I am looking at trying to book some city breaks next year, but I need advice, guys, all right? I need your help where to go for cheap and cheerful city breaks, but not ones where I'm going to get there and it's going to be like I've been catfished. I think I'm staying in a nice hotel and I'm staring, staring, staying on like a bathroom floor, you know? Um, not really the vibe I would want for my little holiday. So, yes, please do let me know down below. And I think we're going to wrap up this video. So another travel diary is done. And my lovelies, can you believe? So the next travel diaries will be... Is it? It's going to be another Caribbean island. Oh, I know what it is. You know when you're just trying to remember what order you've done it in. Um, the next one will be a Caribbean island. Give me any clues if you think you know what it is or if you remember any vlogs where I said I've been in Caribbean islands. Um, that is our next one and that will be the first proper holiday that me and B went on. Um, again, looking through photos, it's just going to be a little bit, a little bit odd, ain't it? But uh, hey ho, that's life. We still speak about memories. They're all life experiences. And yeah, that was the first time going to an island that neither of us had been to. Um, it was B's first long haul, long haul flight, the next one. And yeah, we'll have another trip down memory lane or travel diaries. And then before you know it, your girl might be away on her own. Six week countdown, I think I'm coming up to now. I fly out 2nd of October. <laughs> it's all getting so real now. You think it would be real when I went and changed all the details and had to read book. You think it would be real when I had to pay the balance? You think it's going to be real, like, coming up to it now? I don't think it's going to feel real until I'm actually at the airport. And then it's just going to be like, right, you need to go do this. I mean, I'm going to have to console a very hysterical Mama G. I can just see this happening. Um, I don't think she's going to be good saying goodbye. I think she's going to be a nervous wreck. I think she's going to be an hysterical wreck. Um, yeah, so it's probably not what I need. I just need someone to be calm and be like, okay, go have fun. I'll see you in two weeks. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think she's going to be hysterically crying and shouting and perhaps screaming like, oh, my God, wouldn't put it past Mama G. So, yeah, I keep saying to her, I was like, I won't, I won't get you to, like, drop me off. I'll get a cab or, like, I'll get someone else to take me. She's like, no, I'm going to drop you off. And I'm like, but do you think that's wise? Like, she's all fine for, like, coming to pick me up because she knows I'm home. But doing the dropping off part, when me and B used to go away and even me and my ex before that, when we went abroad, their parents would do the dropping off and mum would do the picking up because they just knew how much mum would worry 
when I went away, even if I was with someone and I went away, she would just still worry. So, yeah, it's a lot of uh, a lot of fun actually on the next travel diaries because this little island we went to in the Caribbean had so much culture and heritage. And like I jumped off the side of a boat for the first time, which I haven't done in absolute years. I think I've only ever jumped off of a boat twice because I don't like the fear, not the fear, but I don't like the feeling when you just go boom. Because I always worry I'm not going to be able to get back up. So yeah, that's going to be a fun one. But hey ho, look at this. I told you we rabbit away, don't we, in these videos. So my lovelies, if you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below. And say, leave me a comment. Have you been on any, have you been on any city breaks? Where have you been? Anywhere you would recommend? Also, if you remember. Also, if you recommend somewhere, how long do you recommend for? I know there's some places on City Breaks where people say you could get it done in two days, three days, or you need a full five days, or even a week sometimes. So, yeah, let me know. And also, any companies, because your girl needs help, all right? I stick with two and end up paying through the roof. Well, I haven't yet, but that's all that I look for. Um, Any other companies or Airbnb, I've never used Airbnb, but... Is that a thing? Could I get my flight separately in Airbnb? I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure, but I am going to stop rabbit rabbiting. I'm going to let you get on with your day. If you are watching it on upload day, what can our uh, keyword be? Paella. Let me know if you comment paella. Then I know that you've uh, stuck with me all this way through, all right? But as I say, take care. Stay safe as always, guys. And I shall see you tomorrow for another big haul. Because it's Sunday haul day. Bye, guys. Ooh.